This goofy photo right here is me in my first classroom as a teacher when I was working at a K-8 charter school. At the time, I was making $28,000 a year, living paycheck to paycheck. And honestly, I felt like a complete failure at the time. All my college friends were making six figures in tech, buying houses, taking vacations. And here I was wondering if I'd ever figure out how to build a real career. But eventually, I went from being this broke teacher to a six-figure data analyst. And in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to walk you through the exact steps I took to make this happen, including the biggest mistakes I made that you can avoid, the types of courses I took that actually worked, and how I landed my first offer that changed everything. Let's dive in. So the teaching era is where I began my career, and it was not easy making $28,000 as a teacher. I graduated with an English degree, had no idea what to do with that, go figure, and I thought, hey, I'll go into teaching and I had a connection at this school from college who was able to connect me with a recruiter and, and get me in this charter school. It was miserable making so little money. I lived with four other guys who all made significantly more than me, by the way. They could still barely afford groceries. Having student loan payments, a car loan, and trying to put food on the table for yourself. My friends would always be going out, but I was so broke that I often just wouldn't go and hang out with people because I couldn't afford to eat out. During college, I had experienced a bunch of credit card debt that I was thankfully able to get out of and I didn't want to go back down that route so I was pretty frugal with what I had but it resulted in me missing out a lot. It sounds kind of crazy but after a couple years as a teacher I became a, a dean at the charter school that I worked at. As impressive as it sounds I was only making about 10k or so more for my starting salary and the story of how I got into that is, is a story for another day but it was pretty cool to be like a 26 year old dean of students. There was aspects of the job that I loved in education. I loved uh, working with the kids, the impact I felt like I was having, but it was a very stressful environment. I was just tired of being broke, to be honest. Like I shared before, you know, I had friends who I felt like were in these more successful careers and I kind of longed for that. And eventually I just came to the conclusion that while I did love teaching and even working with the youth, I felt like a nine to five formal education was not my calling. And so I resolved that I wanted to do something different. And this is where I kind of entered a period of highs and lows and some discovery. So following my time in education, I left my role as a dean and had a short stint in B2B sales. I had really high hopes for this. I thought I was going to make tons of money. It was like a 50k base pay plus commission. I thought, heck yeah, sky's the limit. We're going to make tons of money. But long story short, I absolutely hated it. I mean, it was a terrible job and we were selling a terrible product, but I just could not cold call people all day, drive around town handle pulling. It was awful. I quit after a few months with no backup plan. And I felt more like a failure than ever before. So I had this like pretty cool job as a dean where I wasn't really happy and I still wasn't making that much. I tried out sales, didn't work out, and now I had nothing. I even tried reconnecting with the school and finding another way back into the school system I was a part of, but there was just nothing available. I couldn't get back in. Uh, but I do think at the end of the day, that was a blessing in disguise. After a few months, what ended up happening is I, I took a pay cut to start a corporate job as a non-technical billing analyst. And this was my introduction to tools like Excel, Tableau, and Power BI. And over time being there, I developed more exposure to these tools. So while I was there, I eventually learned what a business analyst was and really realized that data could be a real career path for me. It's funny because I actually started applying for some data jobs around this time before I even knew what like SQL was, which is really funny. But this prompted me to start taking online courses. So while I was there and started building exposure to tools like Excel, Tableau, and Power BI, like I mentioned, I started building reports in these tools for my team and for the clients I was assigned to. But I ended up taking a lot of online courses to get my feet wet. And I really dove headfirst into these online courses. And look, during this phase, I made a ton of mistakes with my learning approach. I was jumping around between random YouTube videos, outdated courses, and honestly just wasting a lot of time on stuff that wasn't going to get me hired. But if I were to start over today, there's actually a program I wish existed back then that would have saved me months. It's this professional certificate in data analytics and generative AI delivered by Simply Learn in partnership with Purdue University Online. 
online. And the reason I'm excited about it is because it covers everything I had to piece together on my own, but in a structured eight month program. I mean, look how they've built this around the exact tools that I use every day. SQL, Python, Tableau, Power BI. But they've also added something that wasn't available when I was learning, comprehensive generative AI training. You're learning a curriculum that has been reviewed and approved by instructors and advisors with decades of experience. And this is huge because AI is completely changing how we work as analysts. The program covers over 21 tools and includes over 14 real world projects, which is exactly what I needed back then. I was building basic portfolio projects with random data sets, but this gives you projects with actual business context from different industries. Plus they have live masterclasses and you get a certificate upon completion from Purdue University Online and Simply Learn. And become eligible for a membership at the Purdue University Alumni Association. What really stands out to me is that it's designed for people from any background. You don't need coding experience to start. I mean, I was literally a middle school teacher, so if I figured it out, anyone can. The link is in the description if you wanna check it out. But whether you go with this program or something else, the key is having a structured learning plan instead of starting three new courses every week like I did when I didn't know any better. Now let me show you what happened when I finally started to learn with a plan in mind. This brings me to the learning area where I built my foundation. So at the time, like I mentioned, I took more courses than I really needed and covered some of the same material that I had already learned during this process. But ultimately the things I learned were very helpful. I took a few Excel courses, learning data visualization, pivot tables, formulas, stuff like that. I took a pretty basic Tableau course and a pretty basic Power BI course as well. And all these I was able to implement in the work I was doing before I formally jumped to my first technical role. And most of these courses I took were from a platform called GoSkills. I also took a really comprehensive SQL course from Udemy called the Complete SQL Bootcamp, go from zero to hero, something like that. But that was a really great course for getting my foundation in SQL. And early on in my resume, I actually focused too much on my online course certifications rather than projects. When you're first learning these skills and you're like getting these certificates of completion, it's really exciting, which you know shows that it's a great incentive for learning. I really liked getting those certifications, but I thought that like the certifications themselves were a little bit more impressive than they actually are. And I like threw a bunch of them on my resume. I don't know if that really ended up helping. Maybe it did. I probably had too many on there, but if I could change what I did before, I would have leaned more into my project portfolio in my resume rather than certifications. I had a portfolio and I linked it in my resume, but I didn't talk about the projects very much, at least in the beginning when I first started applying for jobs. And I didn't have like the craziest projects to start either. My first project ever was like an Excel budget tracker, which is kind of funny. And then like a crazy simple Tableau dashboard on the World Happiness Report data set. And also just like a personal glossary of SQL terms that I put in a GitHub repository. I don't think that was really impressive to anyone, but it was kind of helpful to me and I referred back to it pretty often. But as silly as some of these projects may sound, they helped me get more comfortable with the tools I was learning. And that's where project portfolios are kind of twofold. On one end, you're building projects to show employers and to cover that skill gap, especially if you haven't worked with these tools very much professionally. But on the other end, you're getting practical application beyond just taking courses. So you're doing it for employers, you're also doing it for yourself. And ultimately, it took me 216 applications before I landed my first job in data. And to be honest, making such a big career leap felt pretty overwhelming at times. It was easy to feel like an imposter. It was easy to feel like it was kind of impossible, but I knew I didn't want to stay in the job that I was at. I was working 50 hour weeks. I felt completely burnt out. I felt completely trapped there and I just didn't want to stay anymore. And once I had learned what data analytics was, I was completely hooked and I knew I wanted to be there. During this time, my daughter was actually born too. And I was actually on a five week paternity leave when I landed that first job that I'm about to talk about. A lot of that time was actually spent upskilling and applying to jobs with my wife's consent. I was still a very supportive father and husband. I believe you. 
But you know, five weeks, you have a lot of time. And with some of the extra time that I did have, I was you know, leaning more into taking courses and building projects and applying to jobs. Kind of felt like the perfect time to do it. But this was on the tail end of months of taking courses and trying to apply some of these skills in my day job. And this brings me to the breakthrough era where I landed my first data role. So the first formal data job I ended up getting was a financial business analyst position. I was completely over the moon, I couldn't believe I'd actually done it. I remember after I got hired, I was talking with my director and he told me, you know, you weren't the most technical person that we interviewed, but we really liked you because of the background you had. You had a background in billing and a domain that matched what we're looking for. And so I was actually supporting the credit and collections department of the company I was with. So it really was a perfect fit because I was coming from a more non-technical billing analyst type of position. So I had domain experience in that industry and it was a huge advantage for me. And okay, so at this point, I was making 40,000 more per year than I was as a dean, which is crazy for me to think about. I mean, deans and teachers should be making so much more than they do, they don't, that really sucks. But at this point, I was making a lot more than I was in those positions. And despite how intimidating this new field was, I actually did pretty great in that first role. All the studying and preparation up to that point really did help me a ton. I felt like I was valuable to the company Company. I felt like I was positively contributing. I was building some sweet reports. And a, a lot of the work I did was building reports in Tableau and Excel, reporting observations to leadership, kind of became the like go-to Excel guy while I was there too. I would build stuff in Excel. And in Tableau, I worked a lot with our data engineer. It wasn't the most complicated role, but it was more technical and it was a true business analyst role. I actually really enjoyed it. And so now we enter my growth era where I eventually reached six Six figures. So that first job was great, but it was also five days a week in the office, which I didn't love. So I ended up leaving that job eventually for a hybrid work environment and a 7K pay raise. I stayed at that rate for another year and a half or so. I did a couple of contract based roles actually, and eventually became a product analyst at an ed tech company. And that job actually came with a 15K pay raise, which pushed me over the six figure mark. I think something that has been very valuable throughout my time in data was niching down in some particular areas. So I've leaned very heavily into business intelligence and specifically Power BI, which I first learned in that non-technical billing analyst role that I mentioned. And niching down in these areas helped me to earn more in subsequent roles. In that product analyst position, it was a small company, we wore a few different hats. I was actually a Power BI instructor too, which was pretty cool. And I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity if I had hadn't focused so much on Power BI. And actually building a network has been one of my biggest assets. And it's actually how I was referred to the product analyst role that I mentioned. I had this connection on LinkedIn, told me about the job, blah, 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 and I ended up getting the role. And if I hadn't had that connection, I definitely would not have gotten that job. And another thing that's really helped me throughout my journey in data is trying to maintain a learner's mindset. So honestly, when you create content, sometimes people can view you as kind of more of an expert in some areas than you are. And it can be easy to kind of give into that and sort of play the expert. But I definitely don't like consider myself as someone who has arrived or knows everything they need to know. I, I still have a ton to learn. And as you probably know, in data, there's tons of different tools. It's impossible to know them all. And so there's so much to learn. And so I've tried to just maintain a mindset of trying to continue to get better at the skill set I do have and add new skills into my repertoire. And that's actually something I love about data is how diverse the skill set is and how much there is to learn. And I want to talk about my teaching background a little bit too and how it actually became a strength for me. So as tough as my time as a teacher was, that background did work in my favor. It's given me a diverse experience and it's a really interesting thing to talk about in interviews, but I've also had the opportunity to act as a Power BI instructor in multiple capacities. So the teaching side of me is not gone. I mean, that's one reason why I create YouTube videos is I love to teach. I just didn't want to do it in the formal education system in a nine to five. I still love education. Ultimately, having a career in data has helped me to earn more, pay off all my debt, save more, live more comfortably. I have more balance, no more 50 hour work weeks or parents yelling at me and things like that. And even though I still have a long way to go, I really enjoy where I'm at. So as challenging as it may feel to break into the field at times, or as overwhelming as it may feel to learn all of the things 
things required. I promise you that if you stick with it, it will be worth it. I went from being a struggling teacher to a data analyst making more than 100K a year with work I actually like. It took me years. But the crazy part is you can do this faster than I did because you have so much more tools and step-by-step -step career roadmaps than I had back then. I'll link a bunch of the resources that I mentioned in the description to make your journey even easier. And hey, there are so many things that I would do differently. Actually, I talk about all of them here in this video, so make sure to watch it next. Thank you for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.